Okay, Nehemiah chapter 2. Left off to tell us that he's the cupbearer. And it came to pass in the month Nisan, or Nisan, that's the first time it shows up, it's our April, in the 20th year of our Xerxes, the king. We saw that name in Ezra, our Xerxes. The wine was before him. He drinks. I took the cup. He's a cupbearer. And what his job was to do is, you're having new wine. He would take grapes. You saw this with the butler in Joseph's time. He'd take the grapes and he would press them into the cup and it would be fresh uh, wine, fresh juice. No one else could get to these grapes. They were guarded gate grapes to make sure there was no poison. This is the most important position of the king in his, in his palace. Somebody could easily poison and kill the king. And there have been deaths against kings and rulers. Arsenic and all kinds of poison. So he said, I took the cup and gave it unto the king. The only one who can touch this cup is Nehemiah. And gave it to the king. Now, I had not been aforetime sad in his presence. You say, big deal. That's a royal law. You see, we sit, even England having a queen and all that with no power, and America, we don't realize the, the royal authority of kings and queens. If that king said, off your neck, who cares? Your neck was gone. We badmouth our rulers today. All people badmouth their rulers. It would not be allowed in these times. And just to be before the king being sad, if you were to make the king sad, that was not good. You had to control your emotions. That's something that's not happened today. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance, our facial expression, sad, seeing thou art not sick? You're not ill, and you're sad. What's the problem? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. You know, something's happened, and dread. This I was very a sore afraid. You can't be in a king's presence like this. Here is the first mercy and grace of God. King Artaxerxes said, get him out of my throne, get him out of my living room, get him out of my, before my presence. And the king doesn't do that. And, and said unto the king, let, not, let the king live forever. And that's a general petition, a general request. Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance, my facial expression be sad? Where the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, death, burial, lie is waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire. He's telling the king, you know why I'm sad? Because my homeland's been destroyed. It's burnt down. Yes, king, it's not an illness. It's my heart. is. Just... And he wouldn't even have, really have a right before a king to say what he's saying. He's telling the king, this is why I'm sad. Then the king said unto me, For well, what does thou make request? Now again, we said last night, Nehemiah has no idea what he's doing. Nehemiah has no idea what's happening. He's on his, he could be on his deathbed right now by appearing sad before the king. He explains to the king, Okay, this is why I'm sad, sir. And the king's like, Well, what can I do for you? So I prayed, and this is one of those prayers, this is the Nehemiah prayer. I pray to God of heaven. Look how quick he is. The king says, well, what can I do for you? And Nehemiah instantly goes to prayer to God. How quick are you in prayer? There's no talk from Nehemiah. He jumps right to prayer. And I said unto the king, if it please the king, and look, permission Look, the respect and the honor. I pray, if it please the king, 
And if thy servant has found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's, unto my father's sepulchre, that I may build it. All right. Now, Nehemiah does not know what he's going to do yet. He's like, I pray to the Lord. The Lord said, hey, ask him about building. Now, right now, Nehemiah is like, no, he's not going to answer me. Or what did I just say? What he just said, he just asked the king, can I have a building permit? To go to Jerusalem and build in Judah the city. And the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by, by him, Esther? Is it Esther? I don't know. She was a Jewish queen. Those are the parentheses too. Parentheses are an important no. It's not just no queen sitting there in that parentheses, no. For how long shall the journey be? <laughs> Nehemiah, yes, sir. How long will you be gone? Now, can you just picture Nehemiah? Uh, you're going to approve? Is that a yes? How long should the journey be? And when and wilt thou return? Well, look at the king here with this Jewish guy giving him grape juice. When are you going to go? How long is it going to be? And when are you going to come back? I want you back. You're a good worker. You're a trustworthy fellow. Allow them to be sad in his presence. So it pleased the king to send me. And I set him a time. This is how long it's going to take. Nehemiah still doesn't know at the end of this chapter what's going to happen. Now he's preparing to go to Jerusalem. Moreover, I said unto the king, if it please the king, again, proper, nice, let letters be given me to the governors beyond the river, Euphrates, that they may convey me over till I come to Judah. I need a travel voucher. I need your permission to go. I need your permission to do the royal transportation. In other words, I need a ticket. <laughs> you know, if I wanted to go from here to California, I would need an airline or a train ticket or a bus ticket. That's what Nehemiah is saying. Can I have a royal ticket for me to take whatever transportation I need, King? And the letter unto Asif, the keeper of the king's forest, guys in charge of the woods that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace which pertains to the house now he's requesting before the king supplies I need wood king I need a building permit I need the voucher to go to travel and I need the wood And for the wall, notice one wall, to be all connected of the city, and for the house that shall enter, that I should enter into. That is not the house of temple, it's already built. King, I need to build me a house there. The king said, well, how long is it going to be? When are you going to come back to me? King, I need to build a house. <laughs> need a place to stay, a lodging. I shall enter into, and the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. So it's not the king, it's God. God has granted before Nehemiah everything just prescribed here. And Nehemiah had one of them quick little prayers that God, I need your help. And it's answered, there is times that God will answer prayer instantly. That's the kind of prayers we want. And there are times that God will answer prayer. Longevity. It'll take forever before God answers the prayer. You realize for some Christians, they had prayed a prayer to God and that prayer was answered long after they died. 
God's no hurry. Then I, Nehemiah, came to the governor beyond the river, like he said he was going to, and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and the horsemen with me. So he sends a patrol with Nehemiah. He protects Nehemiah. And I'm going to certify Nehemiah. You see those guys over there? That's my army. Don't mess with Nehemiah. That's what he's saying. When Shem, Shem Ballot, that's the enemy, and her, the Hortai, and Tobiah, another enemy, the servant, the Amorite, they're the enemy, heard of it. So the word got around what Nehemiah is going to do. It grieved them exceedingly that they were come, that they were come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. And when we seek out to do something for God, it grieves the devil. And then now we got enemies. How dare you see? I mean, the first thing, Nehemiah, remember chapter 1? How's the people doing? How's the city look? How's the temple? It's destroyed. It's fire. And the temple is, is doing well. Nehemiah's first thing is, I want to know how the people are doing. I want to know about the land. And the Sam Bow and Tobiah are like, who cares about the Jews? Nehemiah does. And we're going to see that it's not about the wall yet. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. Now he's going to survey the work. And I arose in the night. That's kind of funny because nighttime is dark. I mean, there's no street light. The only light he would have would be a torch, and I don't know what the moon condition would be, how bright the moon is, how, how the stars are. And I saw, and I as some few men with me. Neither told I any man what God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. So when you look at Sam Ballard and Tobiah, they don't know about the building yet. And when they make the thing, the welfare of the children of Israel, all has been revealed that Nehemiah wants to see the people of Israel. And the enemy's like, who cares about the Jews? How dare you want to go see how they're doing? They're a bunch of pain in the butts over there. You know, people of God, get them out of here, will you? The devil's always hated the people of God. So now he's got some men, any man, what God has put in my heart to do at Jerusalem, when, to build that wall. It's still a secret. Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode upon. So he's only had one animal. Horse, ass, I don't know. And I went out by night, by the gate of the valley. And you understand that goes down by the valley. Plain and simple. Even before the dragon, that's the first time dragon shows up well. Well, you know what well is? Water. Dragon. I mean, did it look like a dragon? Were there reptiles there? Uh, it's a dragon well. And we know what the dragon is in the Bible. And we know, we read in Revelation, that that dragon is going to try to swallow up the river Jordan to flood out Israel. But that's all I'm going to say. And to the dung port. What's that? That's where all the sewer went. When In the city of Jerusalem, what they do is they would water down the, all the streets. They would wash the, sea, the, the yeah, streets. And they would wash it all to one common place. What? This dung port. And this would go off into the valley of the son of Hinnom, they said. The, the garbage. Uh, Gehenna. Some people say where Jesus died. Now, Jesus didn't die in the garbage pit. And so it's like a sewer, waste disposal. It's like men coming today, picking up your garbage and they bring it to the dump. That's where the dump port led, to the dump. And view the walls of, of Jerusalem. What walls? When you went into Jerusalem in Nehemiah's time, there weren't walls, there was rubble. And we're going to see that in a minute. Which were broken down. And the gates thereof were consumed with fire. So telling us, all those gates were wood. 
and there's nothing left of those gates, probably maybe, you know, the metal bars and metal locks, and maybe the hinges. That's it. Everything that was wood burnt up. Everything that was rock was moved out of place, broken. That's why he needs timber. Then I went on to the gate of the fountain. You know what a fountain is. And to the king's pool. It's, you know a pool, you know, a little area for water. There was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. In Passover. Then went I up to the night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered the gate of the valley where he first started and so returned. And the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did. Neither had I yet told it to the Jews, nor the priests, nor the nobles, nor the rulers, nor the rest that did the work. What work? The temple. Everyone here that has been there since with Ezra, everyone that's been there has built the temple and is doing the sacrifices of the temple and trying to keep things in order. Except for the walls are down. Then said I unto them, Ye see the distress that we are in. There's no walls, no protection. The enemy's out there laughing at us. And the gates thereof are burnt with fire. Yeah, Jer yeah, Nehemiah, we see that. Big, what were you talking about? No one knows yet. Come. Here we go. And let us build up the wall, Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. Now it gets out. This is why I'm here, guys. You know they're laughing at us? Oh, they got that temple of God over there, but look at their city. It's completely destroyed. Ha ha. Look at the God they go. We're a little feeble Jew. And we'll see that through Nehemiah. Nehemiah stands up and says, Guys, what? We're going to build this city. Then I told them of the hand of my God. What? You know, I was sitting there, I was, I was at work one day, standing before the king, and man, I was sad. Boy, was I sad. After I got the news, what, what this city, what's going on? And I stood before the king and I was sad. And when the king called me, I, oh, you better believe I had sweat coming down. That's it. I'm dead. My job is gone. I'm not ever going to live. And that king asked me what, what I should do. I prayed to the Lord. Very short prayer. Then I, 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 I asked, can I go to Jerusalem? Can I go to Judah? And the king said, yeah, how long? When are you going to be back? King, can I have some lumber? Can I get some permission? Yeah, sure, go. God has been with us, folks. God is with us. God is going to build this city for us. That's what he told him. Said, watch. The God, which, is, which was good upon us, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto us. So he told what the king, he told everything we just read. Tell your testimony. I don't know what to say. I don't, I, I, tell them how you got saved. Tell them what the Lord has done for you. Tell them what God's doing for you. And let me give you a little warning. I've told people my testimony of salvation. I had them call me a liar. But I know. God knows. And what God has done for you that he's done for no else, tell others. Brag about God. Oh yeah, the doctor was part of it too, but God took care of that doctor. God took care of that person that broke in our house and just sat down waiting for us to wait. I mean, God bought the car next door. God has a... God, God, God. Give him the credit. They had spoken to me and they said, let us rise up, let us get up and build. So they strengthened their hands for the good work. What's the good work? For the Lord. Now, when you get up and you say, I'm going to serve God, be prepared. Satan's there. When that sower went out to sow the seed, the very first approach that Jesus said he had was Satan coming and taking that seed. You better believe when you stand up for God, the devil's going to try to knock you down. If the devil ain't trying to knock you down, you ain't standing for God. But... When Sambalat, the Horite, and Tobiah, the servant, 
the Amorite, enemies of God, Gershom, the Arabian, that's the first time that shows up, Arabian, enemies of the Jews, heard it. They laugh us to scorn. Ha, 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 ha. And despise it. You ain't gonna do it. You, you get, shut up. Look at you feeble guys. Look at your God. And said, what is this thing that ye do? Will you rebel against the king? Not with the letters in Nehemiah's hand. That's not rebellion. Do you see already what they're going to be doing? They're going to do what they did to Ezra. They're going to be writing the king. They're going to be complaining to the king. And they're going to say lies. They did it in Ezra. They did it. They're going to do it in Nehemiah. Then answer I. Then I answer them. And said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we, his servants, will arise and build. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Boy, that would get the liberal people upset. We're going to serve God. You can't. Get out of here. And don't tell me you won't be having agencies and, and initial groups. And I mean, initial you know, A and all this. You're going to have people come against you. When you stand up for God, you got an enemy. The devil. And he's got a whole wide world in his hands against God. 